My name is Torquil Norman. Torquil is a strange Scottish name that my parents gave me. I really like the toy industry and I had a, a homemade research team with five young children and uh, so it worked very well and I suddenly discovered that they asked me from time to time what are the qualifications for making toys and I thought to myself well it wasn't my law degree and it wasn't being a banker uh, I think the two qualifications are um, an eye for detail because I discovered that young people are very interested in detail, they love the little things that work and you know and so on. And the second thing was a mental age of about seven and I qualified very very well on that side because so, I never really grew up inside for as far as toys were concerned. Well my most successful toy was Polly Pocket. I have to say, because we did huge things. And also, it was such fun and so easy to think of new things to do with her. I mean, every year we had so many options as to what to make. Then eventually we made little houses where you lift the roof off, and every house had a bulb and a battery in it, so it lit up. So when you put Polly to bed and shut the roof, the windows lit up. Initially, my wife, who had uh, died of Alzheimer's disease before it was finally finished, uh, but um, when I left the toy industry, I wanted to do something that would be of some help to young people. After all, for 18 years I'd been designing things and working with them, trying to improve them and make toys and so on and I thought it was be a good thing to give something back. So when, the, when I heard the roundhouse was for sale, um, I got quite excited about that and my wife and I decided we'd use the money in the charity that we'd started to try and buy it and we were successful. The building itself has improved because we were able to put various big thick chunks of glass, there are three pieces of glass in all the windows, each one about that thick with a gap between. And that meant that we soundproofed the whole building. You can go to 108 decibels now, which would blow everybody's eardrums uh, without disturbing the neighbors. <laughs> Young people are still at the center of what we're trying to do here, and that's the way we wrote the lease. The building has to be used for that purpose. And so with any luck, in 90 years' time or something, when the lease comes to an end, it will have done quite a lot of useful work. Click the videos to watch more Londoners and don't forget to subscribe.